Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We welcome you today. We'll give people a moment or two to come up as we go live this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. We were in worship just a moment or two ago, and then the Lord said to blow the shofars. And as we blew them, we saw some things in the spirit, and my sister had a prophetic word. I'd like you to share. Do you remember what it was? All right. She shared in the word to prepare for war. She said, prepare for war. When you give out a word, many times you don't remember what you've given. That's what it's supposed to be. That's the way God is. But we're to prepare for war and to get ourselves ready, get our hearts ready. And it's interesting that God would give her that word because the word that he gave me to share with you today is on preparation. And so it's, a confirmation. it's a very big confirmation. And then I saw as we blew the shofar, I saw an eagle encircling, looking at what's coming against it to attack its children and going after those things that are going to try to kill its young. The eagle has a tremendous eye. It can see things. And we are to be like those eagles. We are to, the word of God says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But the key is the preparation yes. Yes. of waiting on the Lord. Yes. That's yes. the key. Isaiah 40, 31. And... I appreciate you sharing that word this morning, and she'll be bringing the word tonight. We, we've we seen some things this weekend. Thank you, Sister Vicki. We've seen some things happening this weekend, and the Lord has shown me there's a tremendous shaking going on, and <clears throat> there's things going to be happening in churches. There's going to be people leaving. There's going to be shaking. He's going to shake the church first, and he's already doing it. Because the church needs to get shook up. The church needs to be about the Father's business. It's not a hotel for the saints. It's a hospital for the sinner. This is not about coming and having a good time. This is about being about the Father's business. And when I talk about preparation, I'm going to share with you what happened early this morning. And it's... It's always amazing to me, and I'm sure it is to you in your walk, how God confirms what he gives you with others and then through other little things too. And about 1.30 this morning, the power went off at our home. And ever since Hurricane Irma, we've had multitude of times where the power just goes off, sometimes for several hours. And usually it's on a Sunday or a church night. I mean... The enemy wants to keep you from hearing the word of God. And I thought, well, I can't get the car in the garage, but the van's in the driveway, so that won't stop me. Hello? There's just so many things that God is using right now. But the enemy, it says that darkness will cover the earth. And we're in that time. It's no mistake. Praise the Lord. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> Just turn it. Maybe the camera's not the right way. Is it on? Mm -hmm. No. And I had two clocks in my nightstand because I wanted the clock so i make sure I wake up. Well, the first one I pulled out, I wound it, and it didn't work until I smacked it. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. then it started working. Sometimes some of us need a little smack sometimes. And you can laugh at that. I can tell you a story about smacking things. We had a, a shredder come into our thrift shop, and the thing worked fine. We put it out for sale, and the person went to use it and it wouldn't work. So they didn't buy it. And I thought, well, I'm going to just smack it with a mallet. <laughs> and I hit that thing with a mallet, not to bust it, but it... Oh. So the joke around here was just use the mallet on it. So as I smacked that clock this morning, it started working. 
But then there was another little clock I had, like a travel clock that folds up in a thing, and I pulled that out. And when I wound it, all it did was ring the alarm. I mean, there's going to be more earthquakes. There's going to be disasters all over this world. Are you prepared? Oh, you're talking negative, Pastor. I don't want to hear that stuff. Well, I'm telling you right now, you better listen up and get prepared. Because if you're not prepared, it will overtake you and your faith will fail. Man, I didn't expect to preach this hard. But that's where we're at. People aren't prepared. They want an easy walk in church. They want everything in church. They want everything comfortable for their children. They want, they want this. They want that. They want to come to the meals and come to the carry-in dinners and all the other fun stuff. But when it comes to... And how do we do it? By preparation. Throughout the Word of God, we, we see story after story of Jesus' teaching. I want you to think about it. He fed the multitudes. He's teaching the multitudes. He teaches the Beatitudes. He teaches this. He even told his disciples that he was going to be crucified. He told them. The woman at the well was told who he was. People heard, but they didn't listen. It didn't get in here. Their faith was so shallow. How about you? There was this ship. Jesus got in the boat and he said, we're going to go over to the other side. And he had been ministering. And I'm here to tell you, when you minister under the anointing of God, it takes strength out of you. When you're done, you're exhausted, you're tired. And many times you can't understand why a pastor or an apostle or an evangelist teacher and prophet want to get alone before service and after because they need to get refreshed. It takes so much out of you. Well, Jesus had been ministering. He gets on the ship, and he had a human body, people. He went to sleep. There are the disciples. Now, they've been with him. Come in, join us. They've been with Jesus. They've walked with him. They've seen him feed the multitudes. They wake him up. Well, aren't you concerned about us? We're going to drown. Isn't that how we get sometimes? We get in the waves of life and the things come against us and they come at us and we're there and our, our ship gets rocked. Where are you, Lord? Why are you letting this happen? Are you asleep? Have you ever thought that? Come on now. Yeah. And he, he wakes up. He said, peace be still to the storm. Bing. Now, if God had sent that storm, he would have sinned. Storms come as judgment, but in this case, it was a storm to try to keep them from getting any better. Where do you think the accountability should be? It's on you. You're the one to be prepared. And we're not getting prepared. Sometimes, because we go to a church that makes you just feel good. Well, I'm telling you, I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to stir you up. I'm here to stir you up in the gifts God has on you so that you can do what God's called you to do. It's not my job to make you feel good. Jesus went about. He rebuked the devil. He went in the church. He drove them all into Galatia. And he taught them truth. He went down there and gave them the truth. Told them about grace. Told them about Jesus Christ. Told them how by grace you're saved. Ephesus the same way. And Judaizers came in behind him and said, well, you've got to be circumcised. And they listened to the ones that were false prophets. We don't add to the gospel. If it says it in the word of God, that settles it. And he writes to him and said, oh, you foolish Galatians, who's bewitched you? But what have you done to prepare your spirit? Jesus, every day, got alone with his father. He prepared himself for the day. He didn't just wake up and flippantly say, well, okay, sirrah, sirrah, whatever will be, will be. No, he went alone and got up with his father and found out what his assignment was. You want to know what you're supposed to do every day? Ask him. He's right there to show you, maybe in your word, maybe me. But I said, where do you want to eat? And he said, well, there's a place called Fred's. I ate there once. 
He said, I think they have good home cooking. Because I'm thinking mashed potatoes, okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> so we go down to Fred's. Never been there. Hadn't planned to go there. I was thinking, what am I going to eat? Because, you know, usually you have work done on your teeth. Not only did I have no pain, the Novocaine or whatever they gave me wore off so quick that I could feel my tongue and everything. Mine, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, there he is. And he was daddy's favorite. And his brothers didn't like it. And it's the same with us. We're daddy's favorites. Father God loves you so much. He wants to bless you. And other people get jealous and they don't want to hear about it. Am I right? So, but we have to be prepared when they come against us. He tells us in the last days about these things that kids are going to be running things. Be careful. Be careful. Children aren't able to make those kind of decisions. They need to be prepared. Jesus was prepared. It says he was raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. His mother taught him. His father taught him. He went to synagogue and he learned. Preparation is so important. But there were those disciples in that boat. Even though Jesus had taught them, they weren't prepared. Let's look at some scripture here. I want to take you into the book of Mark. See, the disciples wanted the kingdom on earth right then. They were waiting for it. Early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came under the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Now, let's talk about this. There's some preparation involved here. When somebody died, they would anoint the body with certain spices. They would do certain things. But because Jesus died when he did, he was put into a tomb without being able to be prepared for burial. They didn't wait and get up, oh golly, it's 11 o'clock, I gotta go down there to that tomb. No, it says very early in the morning, sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted, scared. That's not what they expected. They were there, they didn't expect to see an angel in there. They expected to find a corpse. They didn't come looking for the risen Savior. They came to anoint a dead body. Not what Jesus was. He just called him the anointed one. Thou art the Christ. But he didn't expect it to be that way. Now turn to chapter 9, verse 31. <clears throat> chapter 9 and 31. You see, that's the first time he talked about his death. 9.30, and chapter 14, chapter 14. Verse 26. And when they sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said unto them, All you shall be offended because of me this night. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever get a little offended? Because somebody says something to you about your walk with God? Ah, ha, ha. All of you should be offended of me this night, for it is written. This comes from Zeus. So said everyone else. Oh, I'll never deny you, Lord. That's four, that's, that's five different times. Four times, plus this scripture. So the angel back in chapter 16, he said, Tell Peter that he goes before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. So the three women have an assignment now. They went down there when no one else did. They were so afraid. The disciples were so afraid. How many times we go through things and they, out of whom he cast seven devils. Well, isn't that interesting? He would go to the one no one else would go to. Well, you mean you have to get all cleaned up for God to love you? No. He met her right where she was at. He had an assignment that day to cast the devils out of her. Some of us need some devils cast out so we can get free. She had so much to be thankful for. And she went and told them that had been with him 
as they mourned and wept on their recovery. What? Oh, yes. A young man came to our church dying of cancer. God healed him of esophageal cancer. But then he went and got chemotherapy and it did him in. They would not stop it. They insisted that he get another treatment. But the faith in him had risen up. His son had overdosed on drugs. It says in another, one of the other gospels, she knocks at the door. Knock, 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 knock. What? Who's out there? Afraid to answer the door. I'm not afraid. I answer the door. It's the devil. I'll tell him to get out in the name of Jesus. And he has to. I've seen demons and I've told them to leave in the name of Jesus. They're ugly. But they don't have any place in a Christian's life unless you want to entertain them. Hello? So there she goes down to the door. Look at verse 11. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had, not been, and had been seen of her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form under two of eight. When the time was right, there was a waiting period. During that time, he prepared himself. He stayed in the presence of God. And he was favored in that prison. And then when it was the right time, God elevated him. But what do we want? We're so used to your internet, right bang. We're so used to cell phones where we can take a picture. We're so used to instant food, instant gratification in the love of God. That's why being baptized in the Holy Spirit is so important so you can pray in tongues and be able to build yourself up. Because the attacks are going to come. I guarantee you, when you walk out of here, you might have, wow, that's a good thing I heard. I guarantee you, the enemy will try to attack you right away to steal it. Because it says in the word that he comes to steal the seed that was planted. Everybody, anybody ever gotten a stone in their shoe? Have? How about a paper cut? Oh, a paper cut can hurt. A paper cut can hurt worse than something major. And it festers and it takes time to heal. A stone in the shoe, if you don't get it out of there, you will have a really sore foot. Or maybe you wear shoes that are too tight. Some of you are trying to put yourself in a tooth, probably because I chewed a nut and cracked a tooth. I like nuts. We got a lot of nuts, fruits, and flakes in our church. I do like nuts. Maybe we should call us the Church of the Granola. <laughs> Anybody laugh a little bit? I'm the biggest nut. But the third medicine I'm on had, it showed all of these side effects, terrible side effects. One of them could even be death. And I was determined that wasn't going to happen to me. And I didn't. And God said he'd spit him out of his mouth. Well, wait a minute. I'm a Christian. Well, then you show me. If you say that you're a Christian, you show me the works in your life. Works don't save you, but works come after salvation. God didn't save you just to sit in a pew. He saved you to do things for him. You are his hands. You are his feet. You are given the authority. But preparation comes. Then it goes on to say, all right, you want to die? Fine. But I've seen miracle after miracle because of this scripture right here. I was determined that I was going to be one of those believers. Do you have that kind of determination? Are you prepared? Do you have to go to Bible school? No. It says these signs shall follow them that believe. Not the pastor, not the prophet, not the evangelist, not the teacher, not the apostle. Believers, that's you and me. But you, you have been given that authority right here by Jesus. So then it goes on in 19. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The when the Holy Spirit came down in Acts chapter 2, they went out in the street, the very streets where Jesus said, him. right there in Jerusalem. They weren't afraid anymore because they knew they'd seen the risen Christ. They knew that it didn't matter if they were killed. They knew where they would be. 
once we come to that place where we know Jesus and we feel his presence and his power and we've been prepared, we can do anything that God tells us to do. Anything. It says, the Lord was working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Didn't he say there would be signs following? Jesus doesn't lie. He confirms his word. He says these are the things that are going to happen. So, he doesn't look at our past performance to determine where we're at today. He doesn't look at any of it. Wherever you're at today, wherever you've been prepared, God wants to use you. He wants to use you, Anton. He wants to use you, Bonnie. He wants to use you, Deborah. He wants to use each one of you. Hello? Lead in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you're preparing us for such a time as this. Like Esther that was prepared. Like Daniel that was prepared. Jeremiah, Joseph, every one of them. Peter, James, the Apostle Paul. He was prepared. But everything changed when he met Christ. Let's just say this prayer together. Father God, I want to be prepared more than ever. I want to hear your voice. But if he gave it to you, he's going to do it. Right there. They had such unbelief. Even though they saw him raised from the dead. Even though he told them, we have the word. And we acknowledge his word today. Let that word go into us and bring life. Bring renewing into each one of us. Maybe there's somebody that needs to recommit their life to God. I think you just did in that prayer. Don't let the enemy mess with your head. If you've asked Jesus to be your Savior, he's saved. If you've asked him to guide you, he will. You will make mistakes because we still have our old nature. But confess it. Say, you know what, Lord? I, I did this. Forgive me. And go forward in his power and his strength. In Jesus' name, amen.